Hi there, thanks for joining me. Today I'm just going to get um, the fabric ready. I'm going to do this applique series kind of thing. Um, so right now we're going to do the very first part, which is getting our fabric ready for applique. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go from the very basics of applique, getting your fabric ready for applique, cutting it in the, um, the brother scan and cut, and then taking it to the embroidery machine and using it on a design. Okay, so but the first part is going to be getting our fabric ready and this part you can use for your cutting machine you can use for um, you know hand cutting and also if you want to draw on any of this stuff and then hand cut it um, instead of you know waiting for the die line to show you where to cut so I hope that that makes sense applique it seems to be really confusing and I agree it is confusing so I'm showing you what I know to my knowledge at this point in my life but I know that there is so much more to things um, the series is going to be long and lengthy and step by step and kind of drawn out I'm not going to try to go quick with anything so um, that's why I'm going to chunk it up into pieces and parts okay all right so first of all if you're going to use your cutting machine and you have a brother scan and cut sometimes they come with this or you can purchase this in at your dealer at your local dealer it's the iron-on fabric applique contact sheet okay and this stabilizes the material so that it's easy to cut on the scan and cut it kind of makes the material thick and that's what you want on the scan and cut with your fabric so that it doesn't pull on it okay and I think I haven't tried this yet I haven't even opened it so you guys get to be guinea pigs just like me <laughs> but this is heat and bond light this is my favorite thing to use for all things applique it's the purple package there's a red package and a purple package and the red package is more for patches this is a purple package and this is lightweight and sewable this is for applique as well and I just have a big bucket full of fabric of scrap fabric that already has it on it I have a video an older video showing how I just take all my scrap and it's really simple I just take it and lay all the scrap pieces out and iron them on it's not rocket science but this is what it looks like okay it has this like gritty film and a paper backing okay and you just iron that on and you get this and then you can iron this on it's temporarily adhesive it's not long-term adhesive it eventually will come off if you don't sew it onto the onto the material but you can temporarily put it onto your fabric so that you can sew it on and um, it stays on really nicely I'm not sure if this does the same things it looks like it does I read the directions but I'm not really good at absorbing them sometimes <laughs> but they are on there and I know I will have to before I start and then the third way that I wanted to try have not tried this yet is um, freezer paper okay so I saw this on Apple Lover 53 page 53's YouTube page and um, so you just take your your fabric and if you don't want to put heat and bond on it because heat and bond is and this is too it's permanent it stays on your fabric all the time it makes your fabric kind of plasticky so say what you're doing you can't you can't have that you're, you're doing something that needs to be soft and you know maybe you're doing quilt squares you know you don't want to put heat and bond on the back of quilt squares because that's going to make your whole entire quilt like this which you don't want that at all you want it to be soft and supple and easy for the person who's going to quilt it or for you so I you know I'm going to go ahead and iron that out but you sandwich it basically and turn it into what makes it feel like cardstock and then you put it onto your scan and cut mat and it's supposed to be strong enough to cut it now that same um, theory could go if you did it 
with this. Sorry, I bumped it. Um, if you went ahead and did this and then drew your applique on to this or pinned your pattern onto this and cut it out, you probably still do, do just great. So let's go ahead and get started. So the heat and bond light, I'm not going to really show you how to do it. It's very simple. You, if there was nothing on here, you put it face down and you put the bumpy side down, paper side up, iron it on. And I almost always try to have some parchment paper over everything so that nothing gets on my iron. The parchment paper doesn't have any stick to it. And this is a Reynolds kind that I just found. It has, I don't know if you can see that graphs on it, graph paper. Let's see, I'll show you. It's Reynolds Kitchen Genuine Parchment Paper. Okay, and the freezer paper I have is also Reynolds. This stuff is awesome though. I've been using it to like cover my counters when I'm making food and stuff like that and just all kinds of things. Separate paintings so they don't get stuck to each other. This stuff is great for everything. I've been putting it underneath where I'm painting too. So that's the heat and bond light way. I will um, post my old video down in the, the thing below so that you can see how to do that if you still need to be shown. Um, I have a feeling that it's going to be exactly like this heat and bond, but for the sake of the video and for the sake of people with their scanning cuts, we're going to use this. Okay. All right. I always feel like a rebel when I use something for the first time. <laughs> oh, this feels way different. Oh boy, it feels like wax paper. Interesting. Okay, so I'm going to cut a little bit more than generous piece. I use all my straps, so. And I hate, like, when L's are left off the edge of things. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Okay, so I'm not really sure what that iron sign means, but I'm guessing that means that's the side that needs to be ironed. Let's read. Use the standard mat for cutting for about iron for 20 seconds, depending on fabric type. For piecing projects like packwork, blah 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 blah. blah. exactly sure which side to put it on so which is why I really love having parchment paper this isn't really all you can't tell which side is which well that looks more papery so let's do a little test Paper taco. Okay. So of course we're going to keep it face down because we want our fabric to stay looking like fabric. And I'm going to put this kind of sort of shiny side down over it and put the side that said iron on it over that. And oh, of course my iron is, I have an iron that automatically turns off after 30 seconds, I mean 30 minutes, 
So I had to turn it back on. Hopefully it's still warm enough though. I know after doing it, it seems obvious that it was that specific shiny, gluey look inside. But I always like to double check things before I try to use them. Ooh, that's really hot. Okay. So do we peel the back off or is it supposed to stay with this backing? Oh no, there's the back. Oops. Okay. So yeah, it's pretty much just like the heat and bond. Okay, so we're going to do that. Well, first, we that was fun learning that. So whenever you have your fabric sheet that hopefully either came with it or you had to purchase the waxy, papery look inside, that's the side that goes down onto the back side of your fabric, like that. So that they can turn into glue and then you peel this papery part off. Okay, so that looks like that. And heat and bond light looks like this. And I'm showing that to you specifically just in case you took it out of the package, you know, any of this stuff out of the package and never put it back in the package. Sometimes I do that and I just don't know what things look like. So now we're going to do our. Um, our little piece in the freezer paper for the scanning cut. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna put our freezer paper. We want the papery side up and the shiny side on the inside, okay? And it's gonna look, well, what it's gonna do is it's gonna melt these pieces together. It's gonna melt everything together, but the, the glue isn't so strong that it stays with your thing. It comes right off, okay? And you can use the same method without doing the taco thing. Um, you can iron fabric onto a piece of, um, freezer paper and feed it through your uh, inkjet printer or even probably your laser printer, but you can feed it through the printer and print right onto your fabric. So that's another fun thing you can do with this, but let's stick to what we're doing. Okay, so we got it in the little taco. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this piece ready using the rest of the um, Brother Scanning Cut applique stuff. Okay, oh look at that perfect size. Okay. And I always like to make it just a little bit bigger. Okay, so let's turn it face down. And let's go ahead and iron it real quick. Okay. Put your parchment down. Make sure your fabric is face down. And then remember the gluey side. You have to look for it. So it kind of looks like that. And that's the papery side. You'll be able to see where the folds are and make scratches in it and stuff. So go ahead and put that glue side down onto your fabric. Top of your parchment paper. And then. And the parchment paper sliding around. Oops. Okay, so I want to 
give it some really good pressure. It says about 20 seconds. Yeah, I'm just kind of going over this first since it slid around a little bit whenever I was first putting everything together. So now I'm going to hold it down. Okay, it's really hot. So you might want to give it a second to cool, not like I did last time where I just grabbed it, or like I'm doing now. <laughs> See why you want to put parchment down? All of that plastic is going to go somewhere and you don't want it to go on your ironing board. Okay. And you just peel the backing off. There we go. And then you cut all this off, of course, or just yank it off. Alrighty. So I'll be back in a minute with the cutting machine part. <laughs> See ya. Hi there, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to do some test cuts of the three different types of ways to prepare your applique. Um, this one, we used Heat and Bond Light. I just did a video on this and I'll link it below. Um, and this one we used Heat and Bond Light. Okay. And then on this one, we used the Iron On Fabric Applique Contact Sheet that came with my Scan and Cut. I haven't cut fabric with my Scan and Cut yet for some reason. I'm intimidated even though it's the reason I bought the machine. <laughs> so it looks exactly the same and feels exactly the same as um, the Heat and Bond Light. Okay, so that's those two. And this one doesn't have any, um, any type of stabilizer on it. It's just a plain piece of cotton fabric in between two pieces of um, plastic coated freezer paper. Okay. This is the paper side on the outside and the plastic is on the inside and it melts to the fabric. Once we have it cut, we'll be able to remove it from this sandwich and there shouldn't be any glue on your fabric at all. Okay, so these ones both have permanent glue on the back, which stabilizes it and helps you do applique. And also it temporarily adheres to your material with an iron if you want to um, so that you can place things better but it's temporary okay and then this one has heat and bun light so these two are essentially the same thing they're a little bit different and they look different when you're putting them on but they're essentially the same thing and then this is without anything just using freezer paper okay so hold on one second we'll be right back at the machine okay all right so we're over at the machine i wanted to go ahead and show you Take your spatula, or in my case, this is just like a dish scraper from Pampered Chef. You can get them at Walmart, you can get them at the dollar store. They're fantastic. So just take those and kind of press the fabric in, being gentle. Don't scrub really hard. That's going to make your fabric full. Just kind of push it in there. And same with this one. Just kind of give it a, a push in there. And then push down on the edges a little. And then same with this, make sure it's on the mat, okay? Oops, my hand got stuck with the mat. And also another little tip I wanted to give you guys is usually we want to clean our mat as soon as we're done before we put our protective film over it. You want to clean it with the baby wipe. But go ahead and also once you take the protective film off, Give it a good wipe with the baby wipe again to kind of reactivate those glues. That's how I've been able to keep this one specifically so sticky. My old one is a lost cause. But this one I've been able to keep it relatively sticky and I use my skin and cut pretty often. Okay, alright, so let's go ahead. Let's see if we can zoom out. We can't. <laughs> There's a machine. I put white fabric over the window so 
not be so such a harsh light. Hopefully that'll help with the lighting around here. Okay, let's just go right up here to that. You guys don't need to see the mat anymore. We've already done that. Okay, so we're just doing test cuts right now. We're not doing anything special. So I'll show you how to do test cuts. Let's turn on the machine. Find my stylus. Okay, that's much better. Okay, push for the home screen. It's going to say the carriage and mat will move to the initial position. What that means, if you don't know, and part of this series is, is going to be step-by-step -step instructions. So if it seems like I'm teaching you like you've never used your machine before, that's what I'm kind of trying to do. Um, so this, we're going to push this button and it's going to reset everything. Okay, so don't have your mat in there. If your mat is in there, it's just going to spit it out. All right, so we're going to go into pattern. We're going to choose test cut. And let's go ahead and do circles because this is the shape I plan to cut anyways. So let's choose set and it's going to put our circle up here and I'm just going to kind of bring it over here so I can see it easier. And now one of the reasons why I bought my scan and cut and the reason why I love it so much is because I don't exactly know where to put that unless I look on my mat. Right, and I find exactly where it's at, you know, like if I wanted it to go three inches, three and a half inches over, three and a half inches down, all that stuff. I'm just not that good at math. So, one of the things I love about this machine, and I'm not getting paid by Scan and Cut, I'm just telling you why I love my machine. <laughs> Although I'd love that, Scan and Cut, if you're listening. <laughs> okay, so there's our little shape. We can scan in our material. Let's see. Oops. Okay, so it scanned in our material. We can see exactly where to put this test cut. And I think I want to make this test cut a little bit bigger. I think a circle, a small circle is going to be kind of hard um, just from knowing the machine, but I could be wrong. But I'd rather start bigger than smaller and regret it. So let's just, and these are just scrap pieces anyways. So let's put that one there. Let's do... Nope, let's just do that one for now, okay? Choose okay. Okay, and then we're gonna choose cut. All right, it says it's gonna take it one minute to cut. Because, well, it says one minute, but what it really means is under one minute. And I usually have my blades set around one because I do a lot of cutting with contact paper and vinyl and stuff. Um, but I think that based on the thickness of this and how this feels, I'm probably going to bump it up to just under two, oops, and see how that goes. Okay. Oh yeah, now I remember why the test cuts are so small. <laughs> Just in case the first time it doesn't work out, which this time it might not work out. Okay, so let's go back and make that little again. Sometimes you just gotta do what they say. Stop acting like you know everything. <laughs> okay, so click OK. OK, cut. Less than a minute. And we'll choose, start, I'm going to set you up down here first. 
so if it messes up you can see it okay finish cutting so I don't really like having to take it off of the thing but it's okay so it looks like it didn't cut through at two so that's good to know I was afraid that I made it too that my blade was going to be too deep okay I'm going to keep messing around with this and I will be back with you guys with a final blade depth when this is set but always do test cuts on yours because even though mine might say that you know it should be at three or something like that yours might be three and a quarter or two and a half or you know what I mean so I'm just giving you a guideline of what it what works for me but always do test cuts and try things out okay so that's about where I would start with um, doing a cardstock so let's see okay I'm gonna have you guys stay for one more time but <laughs> I'll be back with you whenever I have it figured out after this cut just thought you might like to see this one okay I'm gonna also move the circle over or down just a little bit <coughs> Oh, we're getting close. Cute. Okay, let's go for this very last one. I'm going to bump my blade up. I'm going to bump it up to three. Let's see how it goes. Now this is the one with heat and bond light, okay? And remember, it's heat and bond light. Don't use the red bag, use the purple. Okay, I thought I was going to need to do this a bunch of times, but I don't need to come back to you guys later. <laughs> there it goes, it's perfect. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I was so scared of doing this for so long. Perfect circles, no dragging, no sticking, no pulling, no fraying. So three is the magic number for that one. Let's click OK. We're gonna. I'm just gonna keep going through all of these. I will. I'll keep the video on and fast forward it. That way you guys can still see everything, but you don't have to listen to me and the machine and everything. <laughs>
Okay, now that I know it's so easy, oops, and the scan and cut cuts so beautiful when you use some sort of stabilizer like Hayden Bond Light or the Iron On fabric applique contact sheet. And I will include links to all of this stuff in the bottom as well as on our blog page and I have an Amazon store. So many ways for you to find all of this stuff that um, you need to do this. So I'll add the freezer paper. I'm not sure if I showed this already, but this is the freezer paper I used. Okay, it's a big old hunkin' thing. So only one I could find at the store. I'm pretty sure you can find it anywhere. And then Heat and Bond Light. Heat and Bond Light is inexpensive and you can find it everywhere. And it cut so nicely. And my blade depth was three. And I'm excited to do more applique now. Woohoo! All right, see you guys later. Hi there, thanks for joining me this morning. I just want to go through um, a few websites that I love to use for applique. Um, if you're not really sure what applique is, and I wish that I had taken the time to explain it in the first video that I did in this series when you're preparing your materials. So what applique is, is instead of using the thread to paint the picture of what you're trying to create, you will just tack down um, some fabric over that area instead of having it do a fill stitch. You'll tack it down with fabric. You'll put a piece of fabric and then it'll just do the outline of that piece of the embroidery instead of it doing a fill stitch. So I know that's really hard to explain. I mean, hard to imagine that. But I'll show you here in a second, okay? So this video is just mostly going to um, focus on where I like to buy my designs the most, okay? And I know that there's tons out there. There's so many good designers. I can't, I couldn't pick, you know, if I wanted to. But I mean, I have my favorites, obviously. But there's so many that it would just be impossible for me to list all of my favorites. So I'm just going to list three of the ones that I use the most. And um, and let's just jump into it. My dog is whining in the background. She seems to do this every time I want to do a video. She's so um, jealous. <laughs> so I'm sorry if you have to, if you hear that in the background, I'm really sorry. All right, so first off is Etsy. Etsy is one of my very favorite places to buy all embroidery designs as well as cut files um, and graphics for digitizing. And um, you can find lots of applique right here on, on Etsy. You can find simple ones. Your machine should come with these simple shapes though. Okay, I'm not sure about the triangle, but I know it should come with these simple shapes. And I don't think it comes with any, it comes with, my machine is a SE425 and it's a 4x4 hoop and it comes with um, a font that could be used as applique, but it doesn't really come, doesn't print out as an applique because an applique, you need your die line, which tells you where to put your fabric you need your tack down. So you put your die line down on the stabilizer. You put your tack down on the, okay. Your die line goes on the stabilizer. Then you put your fabric down and then you place the next stitch is gonna be your tack down stitch. That's gonna, it's gonna set that fabric onto the material. And then you're gonna have your final stitch. So in applique, there's three steps but the applique font on my machine doesn't really give you those three steps in each letter. It just shows you the letter as an outline, so you could applique it. Okay, so on Etsy, there's tons of ideas and there's tons of, you know, the price range is different. 
ranges on all different things, you know, some of them are super adorable. And a lot of them are going to come with instructions and some of them might not come with instructions. If it's very simple, it'll come out, you know, something like this. It's going to give you the steps, but it's going to be very um, easy. So it might not have the uh, instructions with it. Um, this is so cute. Look at these. I have yet to do one of these yet, but I really want to try them. The little towels. So as you can see, Etsy has a variety and these are mostly um, all people who embroider, I mean, who digitize as their own business instead of, you know, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> Etsy gives these people an opportunity, like people, regular people like you and me, to have a shop on Etsy and take your digitized designs and sell it. So my husband has a a page on here. I'm not sure if he has very much applique though. You'd think that I would know. <laughs> so if you're just looking for anything, you're looking for applique, you're looking for anything specific, um, just make sure that you type in applique and um, in Etsy, you're going to get tons of results. Look at that, 568,000 results right here while we're waiting. <laughs> My computer's a little slow. Okay, so I typed in Clever Dog Designs and it brought me all designs, I guess. You would think it would be more so sophisticated than that. There it is. Okay, so let's see. Does he have applique? Oh, there, yeah, oh yes, 20 applique designs. Okay, I'm not trying to, to plug him, even though I guess I am, but <laughs> here's all of his applique designs that he's created. And he's created them with so art. So if you're interested in creating your own too, look through our other videos. We have tons of videos on how to digitize your own designs using so art. Okay, so our embroidery digitizing software. All right, so that's Etsy. Etsy is really helpful. Um, if you need help figuring out how to transfer it or how to download, hmm, let's see. Okay guys, so that's Etsy. Um, Etsy has all of everything on here, but um, if you're looking for applique designs, you can come onto Etsy, just type in applique or type in the specific type of applique that you're looking for. And um, there's so many different ideas, so many different ideas. So we're gonna close Etsy and we're gonna go to my second favorite, and that's Urban Threads. And if you haven't been to Urban Threads yet, it's amazing, okay? And they're also part of Embroidery Library. I think that they're like sister companies. So if you go to Embroidery Library, they also have a lot of really beautiful designs as well. So I just went on here into Embroidery Designs Specialty, and then I chose their applique. And they have seven pages of applique, and they have sales all the time as well as freebies. I, I don't know how many applique freebies they give away, but look how adorable these are. So they have them all um, as individuals, but then sometimes they will um, put all the individual designs into a pack so you can buy everything at once. I don't know why my computer's wigging out all of a sudden. So, yep, there it is. So the design pack right here is $22.41 and um, it gives you all the all the pieces. Okay, here is a Sheer Magic Wings applique. So what you'll do is you'll take like organza and use that as the applique. And that's really pretty. Okay, so these are all pretty self-explanatory. If you haven't done any applique yet, so we'll take this one as a um, 
what's the word, uh, example. Okay, so most likely what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your stabilizer on the machine, or your stabilizer and your fabric um, onto the machine, and then, well, if you're doing it on a shirt. It depends on what you're doing the applique on, but, oh, wait, no, it doesn't. I'm thinking in the hoop. I'm getting my mind mixed up with in the hoop. Okay, so with applique, <laughs> It, you're going to put your material and your stabilizer in the hoop, and then it's your first step is going to be the die line, and that's probably going to be just an outline of this Yeti guy. And then it's going, then you're going to put your fabric over it, and then you're going to press number two, and that's going to give us this tack down line right here, this white line. Okay. And that's going to give us our little outline of the little Yeti guy. So that will be step number two. And now step number three is just going to be the final step that makes it look nice. This one looks nice already. So this might only have st two steps. Excuse me, because it looks like the, the tack down is the same as the final stitch. Just in my guessing. Um, and then it'll print out all of, or sew out all of the, the fill stitch details, okay? So applique is really fun. A lot of times it doesn't have both parts. It's just simple applique, but a lot of times it does have, you know, some fill stitching and some regular parts, okay? I mean, fill stitching and some all, all fabric. But look how pretty that is. That's like a um, freestanding lace kind of look without having to do the freestanding lace. So there's 3D designs. That's really cute. So Urban Threads has a lot of really fun stuff, a lot of, you know, interesting things that you might not find anywhere else. I think edgy might be a good way to describe it, but um, just go through it. I'm not going to make you guys go through all of it in the video because I know this video is already going to be longer than I like, but you can, you know, applique just makes it really simple. So imagine if you try to do this specific design, but with a fill stitch in the back, that would probably take 45 minutes just filling in this whole back stitch. With this, you just do your tack down, your die line, or your die line, your tack down, and your final stitch with fabric and you're done. It's fantastic. <laughs> That's so cute. So I don't know what side. Oh, that's cute. It looks like the, the spectacles are with plastic. So that's the applique part. So it, it looked like um, with a probably see-through vinyl. That's adorable. Oh, that one's really cute, too. The only applique piece in there is just the bunny. Super easy. <laughs> really pretty leaf appliques. Here's some 3D appliques. Oh, I haven't seen these yet. Oh, I love these dinosaur ones. Those are cool. Oh, I have these. I have the ice cream ones. They're really cute. Okay. Oh, I love that. Okay, so I could do this all day. <laughs> the point is, is that there's a lot of appliques on here. And um, Urban Threads is really, 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 really wonderful about having all of the information about how to do each design and tutorials and stuff like that. They have a whole section on tutorials. And it's not just how to do their designs, but how to do embroidery and stuff like that, you know, sewing, embroidery, all of those things to help you be more successful. They're really, 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 really lovely. I would I would recommend just going through this entire website. If you haven't done any freestanding lace yet, that's another thing that's really cool. But here's all the tutorials, different things that you can do. Oh, I love those. Okay, so that's Urban Threads. That's a great place to find applique, really quality, nice applique. You're gonna get beautiful stitch outs um, and you know, peruse the rest of their site because they're really beautiful, beautiful stuff. Okay, 
And now this one is my all-time favorite. I am... Whenever I first started embroidering, I thought that their stuff was too babyish because I didn't know what applique was. And then once I learned what applique was, oh my gosh, I I totally um, ate crow <laughs> because I love their designs. Their, their site is my favorite. If I ever need anything, I go straight here. I, I had to take a break from, you know, every time that they have a sale, they would do giveaways. So I would buy everything to the point where when um, she would have a new sale, I didn't have anything that she didn't already have. So I have had to take a little bit of a break. <laughs> so the designer is Becca Louder. She's very, very nice. If you ever need anything, you can email her directly and she responds you know, very, very quickly. Um, but here's all the free designs that she gives away. These are all super, super simple. Okay. And this is what we're going to pick. We're going to pick a design off of here to continue on to um, the next part in the series for machine applique. So um, if you want to follow along, come here to planetapplique.com, go into the free appliques area um, right over here on the left hand side. Or is that my right? It's my left. <laughs> um, over here on my left hand side. And um, find that design or another design. Okay. So just real quick, like designs like this, they're going to have three or four steps. Because there's different colors as well as fill stitch going on. A design like this is going to have three simple steps. And this is the, the design that we're going to use to move on to the next parts of um, the series. But you can pick any of these. And if you, you know, are feeling really confident about them, you know, do different ones with different colors. This one is really cute. Gives you two different colors. Same with that one. This is one. And then it gives you the cute little eyes at the end. If it was closer to Halloween, I might choose that one. But, you know, fish are really cute, and this applique can be used over and over and over again. And you can make it bigger or smaller on your machine, or if you have um, editing software, you can also change the size of it in there. So now what I want to do from here is I want to download it so you can see how I get it downloaded um, and what I do with it. Okay, so I don't have my machine hooked up right now, so I won't be able to show you how to transfer it to your machine, but I will do that in the very next video because the next video we're going to grab this and um, we're going to transfer it to the machine and have it do the work from there. So I will come in and show you how to get it from your machine or from your computer to your machine. Okay. But for now, I'm just going to show you how to download it onto your computer. All right. I hope that all that didn't make your head spin. I know sometimes I talk too fast and in circles. <laughs> I am aware of this. Okay. So let's just click on it. And like I said, my computer's a little slow and it's taking a minute, but hopefully yours will go a lot faster. Okay, very simple design, simple gold goldfish applique. And these are all the different types that she offers. Okay, for me, I use PES. So product description, by a customer request, try the simple goldfish applique design. It features one piece of fabric and one color to stitch out. And best of all, it comes with both satin and zigzag stitching. Just perfect. And of course, it's free of what makes this embroidery machine. Of course, it's free, which makes this embroidery machine applique design even better. So she gives you four, three different sizes, all the different files, file types, the finished size, fabric panel, one, two stops, three thread colors. Okay. Let's go ahead and choose download. Now, I'm using um, Mozilla Firefox, and it is different than downloading on Internet Explorer and also different than downloading on Google Chrome. So if you 
use a different browser and you need help with that, I can make a video. You just need to let me know, okay? So um, you can find me online um, at any of our sewing groups as well as just messaging me right here on um, YouTube in the comments section under this video. Alrighty, so once you've clicked download in Mozilla Firefox, up here is where you're going to go to find it, okay? This is where the progress is and everything like that. That's the little indicator that things are downloaded. When it's blue, it says it's downloaded, okay? So I don't have anything else in my downloads that I've downloaded recently, so this is the only thing that's going to show up. So instead of clicking on the zip file, which is going to bring it up and give me trouble, because it's not gonna be able to open it. I'm gonna click on this button right here, which is gonna take me to the folder that it's in. Okay, so then we take our simple goldfish. We, we don't want it to stay in the downloads, even though it looks like, you know, it keeps everything. We want it to be somewhere that's accessible. So I'm going to take the Simple Goldfish applique, and you can um, right-click on it. Okay. Sorry. Okay, so... Here is our simple goldfish applique zipped file folder, okay? So we wanna take this whole entire file and take it and put it onto the desktop. Okay. Now you can drag that to the desktop like I did or you can right click and copy and paste. We're gonna go ahead and close this because we don't need it anymore. We're gonna also close this because we don't need it anymore, okay? Now it's on our desktop, but it's still zipped. So we need to right click on it and choose extract all. And it's gonna give us a new folder. And we're gonna go okay. It's gonna give us that same exact folder name, but without it being zipped. And so even though you only needed, say, one 4x4 PES, you're getting everything. So if you um, progress uh, in your sewing machine or in your embroider machines, you don't have to get new files. You can just go back to your same files and you'll have this goldfish in all those different sizes. Pretty great, huh? Different sizes. And if you get a different type, you'll have the, the different um styles to choose from okay so this it also gives you a picture of what it should look like we'll bring that up real quick so she has a nice little thing to tell you what everything is going to do so let's let's zoom in up here okay it's kind of hard to read i understand but there's your three steps your dye line. So say that we're doing this on a towel. You're going to put your your um, stabilizer down, your towel down, and then it's going to give you your dye line. And that's going to show you where to put your fabric. And then you're going to take your applique fabric and you're going to put it over that dye line. And then you're going to get your tack down. In this case, it's going to be a zigzag. So that's going to help your um, the satin stitch to stay nicely together. So the second second step on this is going to be your zigzag tack down. Now once that second stitch is done stitching out, you want to cut around your edges. If you don't have a cutting machine that has already cut it for you, you want to cut around the edges at that point and make sure to get as close as you can to um to the tack down 
without cutting any of the, the stitching, okay? Because whenever that's done and you're done cutting, you're gonna press the next button and that's gonna be your final stitch and that's gonna give you your beautiful satin stitch around everything. And so you don't want any of that bottom fabric hanging out too far or it's just gonna fringe and look crazy. All of my stuff looks like that. So I'm giving you guys experience tip that I don't even use myself very well because I just don't cut that close. Um, however, I did just realize that I can cut my, my cutting machine. I've been afraid to use it for fabric, but it cuts wonderful for fabric. So I'm really excited about that. If you've been thinking about getting a cutting machine, you're on the fence about it, you definitely should do it if you're going to do a lot of applique. So let's go ahead and close this. And now you know where everything is. Let's say, I'm just going to run through this real quick. Let's say that my machine is hooked up. It's not, but let's pretend that this Lenovo D is the right place. Okay, so I'm just going to open up that folder whenever it's time when I have my machine hooked up. And I'm going to look for the simple 4x4 four four PES, right? That's the kind that my machine's going to read. I can copy, right click and copy. And then open up that drive or and then paste in there or oops or i can just grab it and drag it over there okay oops now it's i'm going to cancel that but if i was going to save it in there that's the easiest way to do it so actually let's just do it to the desktop so i can show you pretend that the desktop is my embroidery machine it's that simple Right? Where did it go? <laughs> it was that simple. Something got lost in space. Oh. Well, guys, when I was trying to show you where or how to move the PES, I lost it somewhere in La La Land. So let's try this again. So I can take this simple goldfish 4x4 ART. I'm going to copy it or I can drag it down. I'm going to copy it. Last time I dragged, I chose the drag and or drug it down to that that file and it disappeared. So. Okay, so then it's right here onto this, onto your, onto the folder, but pre pretend that that was my, my removable disc. <laughs> Anyways, I hope that this helped. I know that I was a little bit all over the place with things, but it's because applique is a little bit all over the place. There's so many different ways to do it, so many different things to include. Um, when you're doing it, you kind of have to think in a different way than you've probably ever thought before. And then there's a whole different portion of machine applique, which is um, in the hoop designs. And those are really, really fun. Those are truly in the hoop designs. And um, I'm going to make a video about those too. So I'll see you guys very soon. Thanks for being with me. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Hi there, thanks for joining me. I just want to do a quick little chat about machine applique in the hoop designs. Okay, they're a little bit different than your traditional applique. Um, they're generally things that you can make in the hoop and then take out of the hoop and they have more of a utilitarian feel to them. Uh, we're just gonna jump in and we're gonna go to two of my favorite. You can go to Etsy, type in in the hoop. You can go to Google, type in in the hoop. My two favorite websites are bugalena.com and thebeanstitch.com. And um, right here's a little blurb about Catherine. She's amazing, really helpful 
insanely creative. I would never think of a million of the things that she's created. So um, this is just the front page, but you can go through her entire page. A lot of stuff, um, like I said, things that you would never have thought about. So this little set looks like it goes on like a dowel and um, kind of like a little sign, but it's all embroidered and felt. It's really cool. Here's a lighter case. That's really neat for you to keep in your keychain. A lot of keychain stuff, they call them key fobs. Um, there's the soccer infinity love one. That's cool. And you can also contact her and ask her, um, if she's going to make something or if she can make something, you know, she's always interested in, in ideas from everybody too. And look how cheap her designs are. They're so incredibly inexpensive, even whenever they're not on sale. That's still for what you get. $4 is so good. So together forever snap tab. So there's a lot of different things in here that you can do. The pencil toppers are one of my favorite things that she does. So look at that. It's a large one. You probably couldn't use this with a 4x4, with, but with a bigger one, it looks like it's a little makeup case. There's ornaments. So in the hoop just means that it's you can create everything in the hoop and applique is more like putting these type of same kind of designs onto material that's already created, like a shirt or a towel or, you know, you're applying it to something else. Whereas these are embroidery designs that you're creating in the hoop and taking them out and using them immediately. So there's a lot of things that she has in here. She also has Facebook group. Um, tons of tutorials. She's on YouTube as well. See right there. Okay, so there's lots of information on here. And it looks like, oh, there it goes. There's $1 deals. So let's just click on one of these and kind of dissect it a little bit just to give you an idea of what In the Hoop is. I love In the Hoop. It's one of my very favorite things to use so art for. I love um, being able to create my own in the hoop stuff. The cord keepers and stuff like that, they're all really easy to create on your machine. But she creates these really beautiful. Look at this for a dollar. I just can't even believe that. So some of the things that I've created off of here, um, I don't know if it'll show it, but they have the, um, um, targets for Nerf. I created a bunch of those for a little boy's birthday party last year. So these are the $1 designs, which are still really amazing. May your bobbin always be full. How cute would that be to give away to your friends at a sewing retreat? And pencil toppers. So these are a lot of the newer designs. Let's see. Oh yeah, here's the Nerf targets and signs. And they'll come with instructions on how to put everything together and make it look good. But when I bought my embroidery machine, I bought my embroidery machine just to put names on things. And whenever I found Bug Elena and realized that I could do all of this other stuff, it just blew me away. But this was before she was even doing any of these signs. When I found her, it was mostly Bugabands. This is a like famous thing that was going on at the time when I found her. <laughs> but there's so much stuff, so much stuff. I just couldn't even, couldn't, I could spend all day going through all of the things that she has created for us on her site. So these are a lot of like book journal covers and stuff like that. But the bugabands are headband sliders. So I'm going to click on one of her really old ones. Let's see, where does number 10 take us? Oh, yeah. So you can see it a little bit better, how it works in that one. I wish she had more of the side, side view. But, I mean, I guess you don't want to see it on the side view. You want to see it from above what it's going to look like looking down on your child. But yeah, like I said, there's just so much. This is a tiny, oh, there, there's a good view of what she's doing here. Oh, 
Okay, so this won't come with the band. You'll have to go get your own headband and stuff. But in your machine, so it's going to give you your die line, and um, it's going to show you where to put your material down. You put your material down, it does a tack down, and then it does all of the details and the final stitch. And then whenever everything is done, you cut it out. And whenever it's doing its stitching on the very last, very, very, very last stitch where you're going to be putting a backing on it, um, it's going to leave the top and bottom open in those stitches so that whenever everything is done, you can, you have the middle part open and you can just slide the hairband inside. So there's a little up close of it. So I'm not going to go on forever, even though I could, I could be here all day long. Felty designs, everything. Okay. I'm not going to do that to you guys. So that's one really wonderful place. It's called bugalena.com. And you can also find her on YouTube and Facebook. And I'm not sure about Instagram, but probably. Alrighty, I'm going to close this. And now the bean stitch is kind of like Bugalena, but they have their own, their own style, their own twist of things. So they do a lot of key fobs, um, but they do a lot of other in the hoop type of stuff too. So let's see, let's see what the new releases are. And they also have tiny fonts. If you're looking for tiny fonts to use for digitizing or for adding names to anything, these guys have the tiny font. So these are all of their new designs. How cute. <laughs> Make crawfish $1.97 again. That's cute. And that's really adorable. Best friends ones. You can make a bunch of these. And then, you know, if you have a lot of best friends or like you're, you know, when you're little, you have a bunch of best friends. You have a bunch to give out. So there's a lot of their stuff is key fobs and stuff like that. But they also do toppers, trays, keepers, felties, decor, book accessories, little buddies. Oh, yeah, that's something else that's in the hoop are stuffies. Like if you want to make a stuffed animal. I wonder if that's what this is. I don't know if it is, but I'm going to guess that it is. Oh, no, but they're cute still. Look at that. And the cord keepers. Those are something that you can do on your embroidery machine, but these are so nicely um, digitized. They stitch out really nicely, and they have, you know, little details that you can't really do on your machine. Little flags for cupcake toppers card keepers look at these little page edge edge things so you know there's just so much stuff and then i also just went ahead and went to google to see what it would bring up for us okay so this is another planet applique design oh i should have taken you there for the in the hoop designs. <laughs> I, I wanted to to give some airplay to other places that I like, but Planet Applique still, they have tons of in the hoop stuff. And look at those designs, they stitch out so nicely. I have this set and I'm gonna be working on it in future videos. Um, this comes with the, the little boy, but then there's also a little girl. So you get two sets and you can interchange them you know, it's totally interchangeable. They come with clothes. They come with all kinds of stuff. The boy comes with a dog and the girl comes with a little kitty cat. So here's some more. You can do stuffed animals, um, baby toys, rattles, mug rugs. Oh, that's so cute. I never would have thought of that in a million years. So just type in in the hoop like I did. Oh, there's the, there's the little girl from Planet Applique. And you'll see there's so much to do. And if you have a bigger machine, you're going to have a lot more fun with in the hoop stuff. Like this is probably all in the hoop design. So basically what it'll do is it'll stitch out. It'll help you stitch your zipper on and everything. And then you'll put the backing on and it'll do a final stitch all the way around. And then you open it up, you know, you, you open it up and then you flip it inside out and you have a bag. It's so fun. In the hoop is so fun. Okay, so I want to show you guys, but that makes the videos even longer. I want to do it physically for you, 
but um, I will be doing some in the future. I just wanted to put this video out, video out to give you an idea of what in the hoop is versus applique. Applique and in the hoop are the same thing, but they're also totally different. So there's in the hoop is just endless. It's so much stuff that you can do. It, and if you can digitize, if you buy SoArt or another digitizing program, it, your mind will just explode with all the possibilities of things that you can do, <laughs> especially if you have a bigger machine. The 4x4, it, you're limited. I haven't let it slow me down too much, but I am limited to the stuff that I can do and, you know, the different designs and stuff like that. These designs from Planet Applique with the little boy and the little girl, those are best on like a 5x7 or bigger because on the 4x4, we don't get this top part where it's like a house it's just flat across the top unless you cut it up there but it's not going to sew up there for you all righty i hope that this was helpful i hope that helps you understand a little bit more kind of wrap your brain around um what in the hoop is and what you can do with it this is an in the hoop project from planet applique as well and so all of these are just different pieces that you'll make in the hoop and cut out and I think that they have magnets inside of them and there's a magnet at the end of the pole so that you can, or in the, oh, there they are. I haven't done this one yet. There's a magnet there and then there's probably a magnet inside the worm. I think that's how it works. But anyways, like I said, it just, in the hoop opens up your brain, your life to a whole different set of um, things to use your embroidery machine for. So I hope that this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Hi there. Thanks for joining me. Today um, we're going to use a free applique design for this part of our machine applique series. We're gonna use a free design from Planet Applique. And this, this video specifically is going to be transferring the design from your computer to the machine using the cable that comes with your embroidery machine. Um, I'll show you a picture of the one that I have. And um, and you should have something close to that. I tried using a USB and then I got to my machine and realized that it doesn't take USB, but it does take SD cards. And it's the same process for the SD card as it is for the cord and um, for USB if your machine takes USB. Okay, so go ahead and go to planetapplique.com and you can pause the the video right now and do that. It's right up here is how you spell it. Okay, and we're gonna go here to free appliques. She's been kind enough to provide us with some appliques that we can use to practice on. Okay, and we're going to choose the simple applique, simple goldfish applique. All right, and because they're free appliques, you don't have to have um, a, an account to get this design. So go ahead and go straight down to download. The file types will be listed here and the file sizes right here. Okay. And it gives you the information that you're gonna need. So we're gonna choose download. And you might see this again in my stuff because I kind of did a dry run before I did the video. But once you choose download, it should on Mozilla, if if you're using another browser and you can't figure it out, please, um, you know, ask in the group or, you know, message me directly. But if you're using Mozilla, this is how you download your designs. Okay. So this will turn blue whenever it's all done. This line is all done. And you want to click on that. 
and it's going to give you the option to click on the file itself or open it in the file or show all downloads. I like to click on this little button because it takes me right to the file itself where the file is at. Okay, yeah, see, you'll see it a second time. So what we're just going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to drag it or copy and paste it, your choice, to the desktop, okay? Or wherever you want it to go, we're going to choose the desktop. We're done on Planet Applique, so I'm going to close my browser, okay? And then right here is our simple goldfish file folder. Okay, I'm going to move it out here so we can see it, but it's still zipped. So it's awkward trying to get in there and get what you want and get it out of there. What we have to do is extract all. That's what unzipping it is. This gives you access to everything from that design without it being in the zipped file so that you can move it from the desktop to your machine or your SD card. Okay, so now over here I have a regular file folder. All right, so we're going to open this up. And we're going to go inside there and we're going to choose, mine is a 4x4 machine and I use PES files. <laughs> I live next to a pretty busy road, sorry about that. Okay, so we're going to take this and we're going to, well, we don't need to drag it onto our desktop actually. So I'm going to plug in, I haven't plugged in my machine because I wanted to show you guys how it would go. And this is the same as if your SD card wasn't in yet. Um, or your USB. So I'm going to plug it in. Right now it doesn't show that that I have a um, any anything hooked up to transfer this to. So this is what it looks like. There we go. Make it big. So over here on the left hand side where my cursor is, this just popped up removable disk, and um, F is the drive. So that's where I want the simple goldfish to go. Okay, so I'm going to bring it right over here to removable disk. And if it's really big, it'll take a while. It probably is already transferred in there. It is. Okay, so from here, we're going to go to the machine and double check. And I know that you can't see, but I'm going to double check and I'll let you guys know. And it's on there. It's the right size and everything. Now, if you transfer it over and it shows that there's something on there, but you can't see the the image. It's not showing the image file or letting you upload it. Um, it's because it might be a little too big, just like a tiny fraction too big. So you might need to edit it, but you won't with this design. So if you're following along with me, you should be fine for any size that you have. Okay. So I'll see you guys in my next video. The next video is going to be doing it um, on the machine, just hand cutting the applique. And then after that, we'll do one with um, Sew Up Pro and the Scan and Cut machine. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. Bye-bye. there thanks for joining me tonight today this part of the video is going to be um, or we're going to take it from the machine and we're going to do
do the actual applique this time, okay? I'm going to use a little hand towel and I'll show you everything in a second. So last time we were on the machine, um, we downloaded and transferred it. So let's go ahead and run through that real quick again. Okay, we're going to open up the folder that says Simple Goldfish Applique on our desktop. We're going to find the file that we need. I need the 4x4 PES. And we're going to take it and we're going to drag it or copy and paste it, whatever you're most comfortable with, down to this removable disk. Make sure your machine is on and your plug-in, <clears throat> your cord is plugged in. Excuse me. And as long as that's the cord is plugged in and your machine is on, it should say removable disk number F. Okay, so it shows that my goldfish is in there. So let's go ahead and come over to the machine. Okay, so from here, we're going to go to this button right here. And we're going to make sure that our pattern is here. And it looks like it is, so I'm really happy. It should come in three parts, so let's see. We'll click on it and then upload it. And we have our die line, our tack down, and we can do our color check, which will show us everything. We have our, our die line, our tack down, and our final stitch, which is the black, which it says color black, but you can really choose any colors you want. Okay, so I'm going to get my hoop ready and load it up on the machine and we'll get started. Okay. All right, so to get our hoop ready, what we're going to do with this specific project is called floating. Um, you don't always use floating for every application, but for this application we can, okay? And floating is just where you hoop the stabilizer instead of the whole project. And um, that makes it easier to remove things and also you don't get the lines in your project. And you can actually float tons of stuff, but you have to be careful. Not everything can be, and you should practice before trying it on anything that you haven't floated before. Okay? I'm not an expert, just saying. Okay, and I'm using a soft white stabilizer, and this is actually crop cover, like from the garden store. And you can buy it in a roll and it's really wonderful um, but it doesn't take heat don't put it on anything that you're gonna need to iron okay do not use it for that but you can wash it okay all right and then also another part of floating usually you use pins to put your fabric onto the stabilizer but I use this super strong double-sided sticky tape from Frost King it's for window um, shrink film mounting. I just, I had the idea to use it one day and it worked and so I've been using it ever since. It doesn't work on all fabrics. You'll have to play around with different stuff, but for these, you know, simple little dish towel, or not dish towels, but uh, washcloths, it works great. And the great thing about being able to float washcloths is they're really hard to hoop because they're really thick. So floating towels and, and washcloths and stuff like that is, is preferred. And whenever you put this on, you only do it on the top and the bottom because as you can see, this is more like a 4x6 hoop, not really a 4x4. It's because the 4x4 runs in this little square here. So it'll come to the sides of this, but it won't go up to the tops. So don't put any of the sticky stuff on the sides, okay? That's just a little tip if you're going to use this. And I've tried regular double-sided sticky tape, like from the stationary part of the store, and it just does not work Go for that window mount stuff. Okay, and I made another video on it. I'll actually put a link down there since I'm spending so much time talking to you about it. So go ahead and grab whatever corner you want of your little washcloth or whatever it is you're going to use and try to get it as level as possible. You know, I'm not going to worry too much because this is going into my stuff, 
but you should worry if you're planning on giving it as a gift or whatever. You want it to be good. You want it to be nice. Okay. All right. So it's all ready. It's good to go. Now for appliqueing, one of my favorite things, well, almost for almost all embroidery, I barely ever use bobbin thread anymore. After I get used to my embroidery machine and the kind of um, projects I like to do, I almost always just use the same color bobbin thread. It solves a lot of issues if if there's a tension issue and you're working on something that's important and you ca it can't mess up. Using bobbin thread um, will hide whatever mistakes might have happened that you'll probably never know about. <laughs> so in this case I have some dark purple thread um, so that there can be some contrast. I already have my fabric ready. I meant to tell you guys this at the beginning. Um, part one of this series is preparing your fabric for applique and this is the iron-on stabilizer that you can use. It's called Heat and Bond Light. Brother also has their version of it and it's fantastic. Um, it works really good just like the Heat and Bond Light. You don't really have to do all that. <clears throat> this is going to be one way of doing it. My next video in the series is going to be about cutting it on the scanning cut. Um, it's not going to have a series number because it's specific to scan and cut but it will be next so if you're not um, <clears throat> click if you don't have notifications clicked on my page go onto my channel on YouTube and click the little bell that has the little notifications and it will show you okay so sorry about that orb in there there's an LED light that's amazing on the machine but kind of hard on the eyes okay so we see that we have our four pieces Let's choose the adjust button layout and it's right in the middle and it's as big as it's going to be. So we don't need to do anything to change it. Okay, let's come back over here to the project. We'll put our presser foot down. Okay, zoom in. Okay, and it's going to give us our die line first. Okay, let's choose play or press play, press go, start. Okay, for all of those of you wondering, yes, I should have trimmed this immediately. Oh my gosh. Don't don't ever leave your your stuff out there hanging like that. <laughs> okay, so this is our dial in. It's going to tell us where to put our applique fabric, okay? So we know that as long as we're covering the dial line, we're good to go. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and do that so that I can have the leftovers over here. It's the scrap. Okay, so we're going to push our presser foot down again and we're going to press start again and it's going to do the same line again but it's going to do it as a zigzag I believe. Okay, I thought it was going to be a zigzag. Um, but it wasn't, and that's okay. I think sometimes in her designs, it's a zigzag first. And, um, okay, let's pull this all the way out here. And I like that because it kind of stabilizes the satin stitch. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut this out real quick. Put it in fast forward, see you in a second. Okay, so something that's not necessary but will make everything much easier is if um, you put, before you do anything, before you put the dye line down or anything like that, you put a layer of um, water soluble film and it's like the plastic clear coat that you can, or clear coat, plastic clear film that you can peel away. Um, put that under there and that way whenever you're cutting out this, this stuff, your scissors don't keep getting stuck in this. Okay, and then whenever you do your satin stitch, just put another layer. I'm not going to do that for this video because I want this to be as simple as possible, but the water soluble stabilizer is fantastic and it helps everything really nicely. Okay, so let's go back to the machine. Okay, so this is part three. We're going to put this down 
<clears throat> excuse me. Normally I would have water soluble stabilizer on here so that this doesn't get caught in anything and looks really nicely. So I'm not going to do that, like I said, um, but that is generally what I have there and what I would advise in this case. Okay, so here we go. Okay guys, we've successfully done applique. We have applied a piece of material to, <clears throat> excuse me, to another piece of material. So that's what applique is. Very simple, very easy design. It lets you paint with the fabric using fabric instead of thread. You save a lot of money on thread by being able to use applique on stuff, okay? All right, so um, you can leave it here as it is, or we can go ahead and go into our screen on our embroidery machine, and we're going to put a name on it, okay? Okay, guys. That was just a little extra treat for the end to see what it was going to come out like. <laughs> so, you know, it's very simple. At the end, you just take it off of your off of your stabilizer. I like to leave it in the hoop to cut it off because it gives me some tension. So you can do whatever you want. Oh, looks like I got some plastic over there. <laughs> it does not have to be perfect. Well, like I said, if you're giving it as a gift to somebody, you know, that likes perfection, then make it perfect. Or if you are somebody who likes it perfect make it perfect that's okay too but it doesn't have to be if you're not so there we go how cute is that I'll have to trim it up after the video because that's boring to sit through but there it is that is applique it, it was very complicated but once you get the hang of it it's very simple super easy and really fun all right, I hope you guys have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.